many people believe Israel emerged directly because of the Holocaust. They believe that there was a wave of guilt that flooded the Western world and brought the Western world to establish the state of Israel. This explanation, however, doesn't stand up to historical exploration. And the causes for the establishment of the state of Israel are really, really very different. Now, there is a role in between the Holocaust and the formation of the state of Israel, because the Holocaust ends in 1945 and Israel is created in 1948. And because six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust and among the survivors, many want to come to the state of Israel in the immediate aftermath of the Holocaust. And many, many do come as soon as they're able to. But we can't say that the state of Israel was created directly because of the Holocaust. First of all, we have to understand that there's an ancient tie between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. It goes back to biblical times. We know that the Jews, of course, were exiled from the land of Israel in the first and second centuries. We know as well that there was always continuous presence of Jews here in the land of Israel, albeit quite small at times, and that modern Zionism, political Zionism, begins in the end of the 19th century and takes on much more force after the British conquer than what is called Palestine in World War I, receive a mandate over Palestine from the League of Nations, and in 1917, during that process, they called for the establishment of the Jewish homeland here in the land of Israel. By the 1930s, Britain was retreating from that policy, and by 1939, they passed a white paper, as they called it, that severely limited Jewish immigration to the land of Israel, especially during the war at its most critical time. Nevertheless, after the war, there were already some 600,000 Jews living here in what was called the Yishuv, the Jewish settlement, in the land of Israel. So we need to remember these things when we talk about the relationship between the Holocaust and the emergence of the state of Israel. We have to also understand what the real politic was behind the creation of Israel in 1948. First of all, there are three important players here. Britain, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Let's look at Britain first. Britain has a mandate over Palestine. By the end of World War Two, there's more and more violence going on here. It's very hard for them to hold on to the rule of Palestine, especially because at the end of World War II, Britain's a, Britain is a depleted country. They've given their all for the fight to destroy the Nazis and their allies, and Britain's come out of it really depleted. Holding on to Palestine, to the mandate, in the conditions of violence here, and with the end of World War II and their financial and economic situation back in Britain makes it all very hard. There are some people in Britain who still want to hold on to it, but many of the politicians come to the conclusion that Britain can no longer handle the rule of mandatory Palestine. And so they hand it back to the League of Nations. Another player is the United States. Of course, Harry S. Truman, who's president of the United States at the time, can be said to have had a certain amount of sympathy for the Jews. We know that when reports came back about the Jews in the American zone in Germany, in the DP camps, that he was moved and he understood that there was a problem there. And one of the reasons he supported the creation of the state of Israel is because he wanted to send Jews to this place basically to get rid of the problem that he has with dealing with them in the German, in Germany, in the American sector of Germany. But perhaps even more important is the question of the voting in the United States towards the presidential election of 1948. Truman needs the largest state, which is New York, in order to win the election. New York has a very large Jewish population. The Jews of New York, like the Jews of the United States in general at the end of World War II, are very much in favor of the creation of a Jewish state in Palestine, of the state of Israel. And in that background, he gives his support probably more than anything else. He certainly doesn't feel any guilt about what the United States did or didn't do during World War II to help Jews. Not at this point. That's something that will come into the American consciousness much later. The last player, of course, is Stalin and the Soviet Union. Now, you can't accuse Stalin of feeling guilt over anything or sympathy towards anybody. And perhaps one of the best illustrations of this is how he treats Jews who are found on Soviet territory as the Soviet troops are pushing out the Nazis, Jews who have managed to survive. Agents of the NKVD which will later be the KGB, interrogate these Jews. And they can't understand how they could have survived. They must have broken laws. They must have collaborated, so they feel. 
And many of them are tortured, they're interrogated, they're sent to gulags. They're certainly not treated with any sympathy. And again, Stalin doesn't feel any guilt about what happened to the Jews in the Holocaust. Why does he support the creation of the state of Israel? Because he's very interested in getting a foothold in the Middle East, and he feels that this new state will be a destabilizing factor, and he'll be able to then have a foothold here and perhaps expand it more. And of course, right at this time, the states of Europe that will become the communist states are just beginning to be under communist rule, and they will follow his lead. And this will probably be the most important block of states that will vote for the creation of Israel in November of 1947. So what is the relationship between Israel and the Holocaust? Well, I think at the Yad Vashem Museum we show this very nicely. At the beginning of, of our museum there's a work of video art by a woman named Michal Rovner. And it takes home movies that were taken throughout Eastern Europe in the pre-World War II period. And one of the clips she uses shows Jewish children in the city of Munkac, which today is in the Ukraine, then was Czechoslovakia and during the war was in Hungary. And you see these children singing Hatikva, the Jewish national anthem. You see them again at the very end of our museum, where we talk about the creation of the state of Israel. And what's the point being made? The point is being made that after you've gone through the museum and learned about the Holocaust, you understand that these children did not survive. The most salient relationship between the Holocaust and the creation of the state of Israel is the fact that so many Jews who wanted to come here never had a chance to. Of course, after World War II, and especially after the state was declared in 1948, many survivors did come. And so throughout Israel, many, many people have a family relationship to the survivors. They have a family relationship to the Holocaust. The Holocaust is part of their family history. And it's not their family, it's part of the history of their neighbors and their friends. And so it's a very personal thing as well as, as, well as a national issue here in the state of Israel. But to talk about the idea that Israel was created because of guilt people felt at the end of World War II just doesn't hold up historically.